We've come to the end of the Best Picture Road. Hey, I'm Amy and welcome or welcome back. Today we are talking about The Phantom Thread, the last Best Picture nominee that I have to talk about. And before we get started, I do have to do my I'm getting sick. So if I look or sound kind of sick throughout this video, that's why. And there is some construction next door, so if you do hear any noise, it's that. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing that for the last couple of videos, but just want to get that out of the way and let's get started. Phantom Thread was another film I wasn't too keen on watching. The story just looked kind of boring and it looked like another one of those romance movies, just like Call Me By Your Name. But unlike Call Me By Your Name, I actually really enjoyed that movie. This one, not so much. So with that being said, this will probably be a very short review because I don't have a lot of good things to say about it, but I also don't have a lot of bad things to say about it either, so it kind of weighs out. This was supposedly Daniel Day-Lewis's very last role, and I honestly don't think that's going to be true. I feel like he's such a method actor that he will probably want to come back and do another role or two, but if this is his last one, it is a beautiful film to go out on. For me, this story was just so, so, so boring. I kind of just zoned out through maybe 50 to 75 percent of it. I can't really remember what this was about or what this was supposed to be about. I feel like it just didn't really pull me in, but the cinematography on this really did pull me in and I don't think it's actually nominated for best cinematography. But the style really fit the film and Reynolds Woodcock's kind of very particular way of living. And what I'm talking about with the cinematography, and this is what Paul Thomas Anderson does in a lot of his films, is he makes the subject of the scene the center focus, and they're always exactly in the center of the frame, which I really love that. It's really beautiful. A lot of directors and cinematographers don't usually do that, and I thought this was a very interesting choice. And if there's something else in the frame besides the main focus, the main focus is the only thing that's actually in focus while everything else around them or anything blocking them is out of focus or anything kind of in the scene with them isn't as clear. They may not be completely out of focus, but they're just not in the depth of field that the main piece of this scene is. And if there are supposed to be two main focuses in the scene, they both take up equal space on either side of the frame. This kind of reminded me a little bit of what Wes Anderson does, and Paul Thomas Anderson and Wes Anderson are not related, I don't think. I, re I don't think they are. They're not. But they do have very similar styles. However, Wes Anderson has a very pastel and quirky style of framing and doing his cinematography while Paul Thomas Anderson, or PTA, is so I'll probably start calling him because Paul Thomas Anderson is really long, PTA usually does very specific ways of framing and his color palette is usually one and the same the entire movie. For this one, it was kind of a muted, not desaturated blue, but it was more of like cooler colors. And I really, really love the fact that he used cooler colors because I think I've talked about this in videos before. I'm not a huge fan of overly saturated images, especially in movies like Transformers, unless it specifically calls for it in the theme of the movie, like in Blade Runner or Blade Runner 2049, both of those movies are just very neon and they really call for this oversaturation of color. So it works for those, but in Transformers it's just very bright and just makes the movie a bigger mess than it already is. So in Phantom Thread, having the muted cooler colors really fit into the story and I really enjoyed looking at them. It made the viewing experience of this boring story a lot more pleasant. The score is also very beautiful and very subtle, just like the cinematography and the colorization of this film. And that's pretty much it. I really have not a lot to say about The Phantom Thread. The story was just very boring, didn't really have much meaning to me, at least besides what's on the surface. So let me know what you thought of The Phantom Thread in the comments down below. Did you enjoy it more than I did? Overall though, I think this still has a pretty good chance of winning Best Picture. As you can see, here's my final rankings of all of the Best Picture nominees. As a little caveat, these are probably not 
the ranking that I would give them overall. I'm still kind of deciding my final Oscar winners. So I will explain a little bit more of which one I picked and why I pick it in that video at the end of the week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Whoever you are, let me know who you are in the comments down below and let's be friends. If you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe if you're new because after the Oscars are over, I'll still be here talking movies, TV shows, filmmaking, and film history. So I hope you stick around and I'll see you next time. Bye!